All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our webinar today. We're doing it on Don't Sleep on Social Media and Design. My name is Erica. And I'm and Gary. I was this past term's uh, CNM chair. I go to UC San Diego. I'm a fourth year studying international business. Okay, <laughs> and I'm Garrett, um, and I was this past term's graphic designer for CNM, and I currently go to Cal State Fullerton, and I'm studying um, communications advertising. Right. Oh, can anyone hear Garrett, or is that just me? Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Sorry. I had my computer unmuted. Anyway, <laughs> continuing. All right. <laughs> um, so the purpose of our workshop is to basically maximize um, your online presence um, with different marketing and um, just basic skills. Um, so we'll be going over social media, graphic design, and different resources that are available to you throughout the district. Um, a lot of what we're going to be going over isn't just applicable applicable to Circle K, so you can use a lot of these skills outside of the club as well. So why is digital marketing so important? Well, we're kind of in a digital age. We're also in a quarantine age where a lot of the most effective communication that we're going to have is through online. And this is how we're going to connect with our audience and just get information to them. Um, it also helps us increase our online awareness about events that's happening like in your own clubs at the district level, division levels, and really helps maximize your visibility of your clubs. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it with social media. So um, who uses social media? I, I've, I feel like most of you all use social media, um, but it's definitely one of the most important tools, especially at the time that we are right now with Facebook, and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube is definitely one of the platforms that um, is very crucial during this time. So social media, when it comes to getting started, um, one, you want to really identify what each of your platforms purposes are. So for example, the district, um, our Facebook is a lot for announcements, um, um, updates, event pages, etc. Our Instagram is more of an archival space um, so like a lot of our posting on there aside from the story is a lot of like past events but our story is for advertising our twitter is like a confess confess like affirmations confession page where a lot of members get to share their love and their appreciation um, and then next is like social media campaigns so this can range from um, all like everyone on your board sharing the same cover photo for like fall rush or for an event at the same time, for example, if you notice the district board, the new one, they did that for the chair apps, um, or this could be just like posting at certain times, uh, posting, um, changing their profile photo, posting on the Instagram stories, etc. It's like some sort of marketed promotional plan that you have. The next step is if a lot of your posting that you have on Facebook or Instagram aren't getting the attention that you want, your next step is to do personal outreach. So reaching out to members like, hey, like this event's happening or this program, this project is going on or this um, service project is um, happening. This is a way for you to not only connect with your members individually, but also to get that like the news out there as well. So the first social media platform that we're gonna go over is Facebook. So if you didn't already know, a lot of our, um, our organization has been primarily functioning on Facebook. So pages, event pages, um, the normal public pages, et cetera. Um, so some of the purposes of Facebook is one, uh, like I've said before, updates, announcements, publicizing events or creating events, and quick communication. So um, when I say quick communication, I'm often referring to Messenger. So it's one of like the most use messenger apps out there um, and so Facebook allows us to get the word out very quickly. It's a set platform where there's like scheduling and announcements and a lot of people look at it as like um, a timeline and a news feed. So um, that is Facebook. Some 
Major features include group pages, like I've mentioned before, a lot of you have it with your divisions, with your clubs. There's official pages where you have to click the like button to follow their content, like the CNH Circle K page. There's also event pages, like this is what you guys use to find all the SCC information. Messenger, so direct questions and communication. Um, then you have the, also the ability to like, comment, and share all those posts on Facebook. You also have the ability to have multiple accounts um, so you can have like multiple users on one like official page or a group page like admin and you can also schedule your posts. So when we're talking about Facebook, there's a lot of do's and don'ts when it comes to making a post. So here are some tips about making it more engaging. The first one I have is spacing is very, very important. Um, so when you look at the left side versus the right side, you could tell that the way your eye reads the content it's gonna make a difference because I'm gonna be real, a lot of people tend to skim um, a lot of the things they see online. So you wanna make sure that you space out your posts, especially if there's a lot of words. So that way your um, audience can read it more thoroughly or read it more easily. Um, so if you look at the one on the left side, there's spacing between each like paragraph or there's like a dotted line or dashed line to separate the information versus the right side where it just really looks like a block of information and it's very difficult to read. So just make sure that you're keeping your eye on your spacing and just try to be as concise as you can as well. Next thing is use emojis. This is social media. Like there's nothing wrong with throwing an emoji there, using it to highlight some text, use it to um, emphasize a bullet point, et cetera. Like there's nothing wrong with using it. Uh, if you look at a lot of the CNH Circle K posts, um, both on event pages and um, on our regular page, we use a lot of it. Uh, and there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So feel free to use it as much as you like. Um, and it also really helps to emphasize important information. So if you look at a lot of our event pages, um, we'll use it to highlight titles or sections of the event page description. Next, um, so here's a little tip um, for emojis. If you're on your desktop, you can use emojis still. Um, I know Facebook has like a little icon at the bottom at the bottom um, where you can click and select it, but you can also use emojipedia.org where you basically can search up any emoji, like smiley face, for example, and then you can copy and paste it into your text. Next, I have fonts. So if you notice a lot of the, uh, the Circle K um, posts that are made by myself or by my committee, we change the fonts in the text. Um, so for example, like good morning CNH or T minus three hours, um, we basically use a font changer um, right here called Lingo Jam, where basically you can type in any kind of text and it will copy and paste it onto the uh, right side where you can just copy and paste whichever font you like. Um, so there's no program that needs to be downloaded. This is just on your browser. It works for both desktop and mobile. Um, and so you can see a lot of the fonts I use myself on um, a lot of our CNH posts and our descriptions. Um, and this is just a way for you to emphasize the different information you're trying to present to your audience. So I use this for titles, I use it for um, event name, I use it to separate, like if you do have like a block of text that you're trying to like give information out, like an update, um, this is a really good way to kind of add more to your posts and that way it's more readable as well. Um, there is also apps that can change your fonts as well. Um, you just go to your like app store or the Play Store, or whatever store you use to get your apps and basically you just like type in like fonts and they usually pop up like different, uh, different apps that you can use and then it's, it basically becomes like a keyboard so you just select it like you would like a different language and then you can use that font. Next thing is memes. So this was this past term's uh, <laughs> district committee um, <laughs> advertising. So. Um, we have a lot of memes that went around when we were advertising the applications. So I honestly, as long as it's appropriate, get creative with it. It brings a lot of attention to your post, especially if you're trying to make an announcement or an emphasis on a deadline. Um, for example, um, T minus one hour, we had one with um, Andy's hand choking a Ryakuma doll, uh, talking about you submitting your application at the last minute. Um, so just, it's, it kind of gives like a very nice, like fun atmosphere when it comes to your advertising. 
um, and it gives people like a little laugh, you know, it brightens their day a little bit. So don't be afraid to use it or make your own. Um, there's a lot of content out there. So honestly, the possibilities are endless. And then some just oops, some general tips. Um, so if you didn't already know, on Facebook, you can schedule your posts and you can't do it in real time. Um, it depends on uh, what like section of Facebook you're using. For example, if it's an event page, you can only do it on your desktop. Um, and it'll have a button right next to, um, like they'll say the button posts and then right next to it, it'll have like, oh, schedule it or post it now. It's like a little tiny arrow on the right side of the button. Um, but for like your pages, for example, you go to publishing tools and then you hit schedule. Um, group pages also work differently. I believe you could just do scheduling right on there. But if you have a page that's like a, like an official public page, you do have to go to publishing tools and then you hit schedule. That way you can make your posts in advance and really plan out like the timeline for all of your information that you're trying to get out there. You can also share admin powers with your board members or your club members that are helping you with social media. That way can, they can also help make posts and really diversify your content. Graphics and visuals also help boost your visibility and just like your audience's attention to the content that you're trying to get out there. So I highly recommend if, even if it's a meme, even if it's like a cartoon or like a comic or whatever you can find on the internet, I highly recommend including some sort of visual um, that goes along with whatever information you're trying to present. And that's all I have for Facebook. Um, the next platform I'm going to talk about is Instagram. So Instagram is pretty big. It's, it's definitely like developed over the years. It wasn't what it was a couple years ago. And now people are using the story and they're using the feeds and you have like Instagram influencers, etc. cetera. Um, so some couple purposes for Instagram. Uh, and just note that this is based off what the district uses our Instagram for. So um, like I mentioned before, we use it as an archive for our photos. Uh, we use it to publicize um, we utilize it to have like creative publicizing methods like with the story, um, boomerang, et cetera. Um, it also helps increase external awareness. So um, Facebook isn't used as often outside of our organization. So this allows us to give, um, to have more external awareness. So like with other nonprofits, with other branches of, um, of Qantas, et cetera. Um, you can also have interactions with other people's accounts, uh, other people slash accounts. Um, for example, like I use the CNH Super K um, Instagram a lot uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and I can use that to interact with other clubs, other divisions by like tagging them on a, on a story or tagging them in a post, et cetera. Um, some major features, um, just a little overview. There's the Instagram live um, stories. You can put highlights on your profile. You can tag people in both your story and in the photos. Boomerang is a huge thing on Instagram. You can also geotag, so you have a little location for your event. Um, you can like tag it. Um, and then you also have the ability to switch very easily with multiple accounts. So for those of you who are um, handling your club or division social media, um, you have that ability to kind of like flip back and forth. You just click on your photo and then it pops up all the accounts that you're logged into. So you don't have to keep logging in and out. You just select a photo, which is really nice, especially if you have your own personal plus um, a division or club. So good posts versus bad posts. So a good post has concise yet descriptive caption. So like a couple sentences here and there. Um, it also has very dynamic photos of people. Um, typically, we like Honestly, like leave your graphics for Facebook or the story, um, especially if you have like announcements, just because um, it really breaks the like aesthetics of Instagram if you throw in graphics with your content. So some examples of good posts are these two shown here. So the one on the left, you could tell that it's a very like candid shot, you know, like they're laughing, who knows if it was posed or not but they're laughing, you can tell they're enjoying themselves, the lighting is really good, um, they're centered to the photo. The one on the right is SEC committee from last year, so this was a very in-action shot. Uh, this is them on the stage, I think it might have been like their like last final dance or something, I really don't remember, but you can tell like there's a lot of like high energy in this photo, they're spotlighted, the lighting is good, um, people are cheering, and you can kind of like get the feeling from the photo. Um, 
And so, and then like each of the descriptions are just like a couple sentences talking about what the event was, um, any shout outs, um, and it's very straightforward. So like you can look at these photos and you can kind of get a glimpse of what the event was. Some, so group photos, I also recommend, but also try to keep dynamics in mind as well. So try to avoid non-dynamic group photos. So the one on the left, you know, you can tell they're having a lot of fun. They're, <laughs> it's probably like their funny photo that they took. Um, shout out to Senko. Um, but you get like, they're on the jungle gym. There's a lot of energy in the photo. The lighting, again, is very good. You could see everyone's faces versus the one on the right it's people are shadowed you can't really see everyone they're just kind of posing and everyone's very like stiff and they're just smiling um so you can kind of see the difference between the two there and then lastly try your best to avoid collages um, and make sure you're always brighten your photos um, even and make sure you check your phone settings before you do brightness adjustments um, because if you have like the night mode on or like true tone it does shift some of the lighting and the coloring um, and just try to avoid collages just because um, for Instagram, they do have like a grid system. So when you have a collage, it kind of throws off that grid system. So I'll show you in the next slide. So here, for example, um, the left versus the right. So on the left side, it's very clean and cohesive. Um, you can see the photos, you can see the dynamics, the people in it is very like nice and nice to look at, nice to look at basically, right? And then the one on the right, there's a lot of graphics. You don't really know like what this like organization is doing. There's not a lot of in action shots. It's kind of, it's very flat. Um, so you want to try and make sure to have people in these photos because that gives like a face to an organization versus just graphics. Um, and then some just general tips. So you want to make sure you follow similar accounts to gather ideas for your content. So when I'm working on the CNH page, I follow practically like every KFAM account that follows us. So like divisions, key clubs, key wins, Kiwanis even, other um, clubs, et cetera. Um, you also um, can post from your desktop. So if you go on Instagram, like .com, um, there is actual settings. You just have to, sh um, you do like a right click and then you go to properties for your page. And basically you just change your desktop view to mobile. And then that way you can post from your desktop. Uh, if you have questions about that, feel free to let me know. Um, you can also utilize apps that allows you to pre preview your, your feed and layout. So for example, let me pull it up real quick. Um, I use Preview, that's literally the name of the app. Um, and basically it allows you to look at your layout and your grid before you actually post it. So that way you can, if you want to like have a theme or like an aesthetic, you can preview it before actually posting. And then, with Instagram, I will also talk a little bit about Instagram Story. So Instagram Story is like a pretty big platform, pretty big feature of Instagram. Um, you could do literally like anything on there. You could do videos, you could do boomerangs, you can use any of their filters. Um, they have a lot of cool like filters made by Instagram themselves and also by other users. Um, they also have like different like um, I don't know what you call it, like, I keep saying features, but like you could do like a, like a stopwatch, you can put in music, you can do a location, you can tag people. There's literally, there's so many things on Instagram story. Um, so some static examples of Instagram story. So here's a couple that we posted on CNH and also by other clubs. Shout out to Long Beach Institutes for um, like tagging us and letting me see those. Um, so basically the first one here is the CKX from last year. So um, I always recommend that you just play around with the colors. So this is based off a of graphic and then I did text on top of it and then also doodled on it. Um, the next one is STC. So this was their team captain application. You could see that they did the um, countdown clock there. They had their information about the application um, and it's a very good dynamic because there's not a lot of things to distract you. Um, Long Beach did a shout out for Dilsa's P. So you can see that they did a lot of in action shots, their members posing, um, and they actually use a template for this. So I'll talk about that in just a moment, but don't be afraid to really explore Instagram story. Um, and then Citrus here did one for the January board uh, meeting. Um, and it was basically advertising like, hey, this 
meeting is happening on Sunday at 1 p.m. and they tagged us. So there's a lot of different things that you could do with Instagram story. Um, the next one's gonna be a little bit more advanced. Some of them are more advanced, some of them are um, pretty um, straightforward. So <laughs> as you can see, the first one there, you've seen like our most recent like advertising on Instagram. A big shout out to Ricky Sparrow from Sac State. He's the one that's been doing a lot of all these fancy videos of the music and the, yeah, it's, it's been pretty great. <laughs> but I'll show you like what he's been using in a second. Uh, but yeah, big shout out to Ricky. Thank you for letting me use you as an example. Uh, but the first and the third one there, um, that actually utilizes an app um, to do those different effects and to put in music and to put in like, oh, like, bio, like link in the bio. Um, the one, the second one with Jin there, um, this was just like a mini interview. So I asked her like, oh, what are you guys doing? And this was at Dilsa's P. So she said, oh, we're um, repainting this wall. And then she like kind of like points to it and then I slide over with the camera. So that's just like a normal video. And then the one on the um, far right, the very last one, is a congratulations to VGLS. They were the winners of uh, Sikai uh, South. And so I did like a boomerang where they just jumped up and then um, put a congratulations, added some stickers that uh, moved, and then um, called it a day. So you could do a lot with um, videos and boomerangs. Um, and then some tips for Instagram story. Utilize the apps um, that are available to you. So for example, Ricky uses Mojo. <laughs> you can see it in the chat there. Um, he uses Mojo to make a lot of those videos. I've used it myself, it's pretty fun. Um, although there's like pro settings and non-pro, there's still a lot that you can do without paying. Um, so I, I highly encourage you to explore it. Um, Nietzsche, I don't know how exactly, Nietzsche, I guess that's how you um, pronounce it. That's what Long Beach used in the, this post. This one right here. So that's what they use there. I use it on my own personal Instagram. So those are two that has templates set for you for you to like play around with, um, customize to yourself. Um, I also recommend just messing around with the drawing tools and the stickers, like layering them, putting them on top of one another. Um, on Instagram story, you can, there's like, I think there's three different like drawing tools. So I highly encourage you just kind of play around with it. Um, um, use different colors, use different sizes, and just see what other people are doing as well. And I keep saying this over and over again, but please, please explore all the features of Instagram story. Literally, I, I think every day there's something new that I find that I like, and I highly encourage you to do that as well, um, especially when you're um, finding new ways to like advertise an event, advertise your club even, um, et cetera. And honestly, just have fun. Instagram story is is a new platform that wasn't as advertised in the past as it is now. So I highly encourage it, especially for those incoming key clubbers or just incoming first years that um, don't really use Facebook. Or if you have members that don't use Facebook, Instagram is a fantastic platform. Um, and some other platforms I didn't really touch upon, but just a quick like um, mention here. So your club or division website is a huge tool for you to use. Um, I highly recommend making sure that it's updated with links, um, calendars, et cetera. YouTube is a really good platform too, especially if your club creates a lot of like video contents or if you have webinars or workshops or anything that you can upload as like an archive. LinkedIn is very important for those of you who are graduating soon or just wanna make sure that you're um, up to par with your professional development and just like your resume. Um, Twitter, um, it depends on what you're using it for, but you definitely want to try to keep it as positive as possible. Um, it depends on who's following you. I don't usually recommend it for announcements. Um, that's why we use it for like confessions slash affirmations for the district. Um, Tumblr and WordPress are a good platform, so you want to create like a blog, or you can also embed a blog into the website using WordPress. Um, there are different features like on Wix and um, on Weebly and stuff where you can connect the two. Um, I put Snapchat on here because I know Snapchat is a very popular um, platform. However, I don't recommend it to use it to advertise your club or your events just because it's very difficult to switch from user to user. So every time you log into an account, it'll log out whoever else is on it. So it's very much a very like solo, singular kind of person platform. So I don't really recommend it. And uh, I didn't put it on here, but TikTok is a thing now. So if you wanted to like, 
make a club or division TikTok. That's also a thing. That's a fun thing that you use to advertise. You can also post those videos on Instagram, post it on Facebook. Um, and that's also another platform that you can use. Um, thank you for listening to my spiel about social media. I'm gonna hand it off to Garrett now to talk about graphics. All right, thanks, Erica. Um, fun fact, I just downloaded TikTok. Y'all should give it a try. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're gonna hop right into it. So I'm gonna be talking today about graphic design and basically just go over the basic elements that you need to know to get started. Um, you can move on to the next slide. So graphic design is a form of visual communication and it's really made up of four main parts. I'm not really gonna go completely in depth with what each of these need, uh, mean, but just to like summarize it, typography is basically the text. Um, photog photo photo uh, photography is um, just your images. Iconography is just symbols and different types of logos. Um, and then illustrations is just your drawings. And a lot of what graphic design deals with is um, problem solving. And a lot of that um, can be used in advertising for events and just in different ways. The next slide. Okay, so there, there are many more <laughs> programs that you can use other than these three, but these are probably the three most prevalent programs that you're gonna find um, when going into graphic design. Um, Canva is actually somewhat free to use. There is a pro version. Um, I personally have never used Canva. Um, and if you had the, the ability to use Illustrator or Photoshop over Canva, I would personally recommend that. Um, but everyone is gonna have a preference um, as to what program they would prefer to work with. Um, Illustrator is a program that is more vector-based. And what a vector is, is basically just um, a, sh a shape or object that you're working with. So if I were to draw a square in Illustrator, that would classify as a vector. Um, whereas Photoshop is more pixel-based. So if I were to draw that same square, instead of it being classified by just the shape as a whole, it would be classified as a whole bunch of different pixels. Um, so there's different benefits that come with working with different programs. Um, me personally, I like Illustrator because that's what I learned on, but that's just something that as a designer, you will figure out as you like play with different programs. All right, next slide. All right, so within the creative process, there are four main steps. Um, there's actually more steps, but I'll go into that a little bit later, or I, I guess I can go into it now. Um, your first step is preparation. That's basically just when you, you're gonna wanna sketch out um, your work or just start brainstorming what you wanna do. Um, this is one of the harder stages within the creative process because a lot of the time, it's really difficult for people to um, grasp onto an idea or visualize something that they want and transfer it into um, their work. And the there's actually a step in between this, but I didn't put it, but it's called frustration. And it's something that all of us are gonna experience. And it's probably the biggest reason why most people consider themselves uncreative because everyone is creative. Everyone has some level of creativity, but oftentimes people let their frustration stop them from pushing themselves. So between preparation and incubation, there's a hurdle that you have to get over. Um, and the best way to do that is to either just go on a walk or like let the world around you inspire you, watch a movie, go on your phone, literally do anything else other than work on your graphic and you'll, you'll, you'll get through that. Um, the next stage is incubation, and you're just gonna want to sit on the idea or the, the rough draft that you have, give yourself time, and when you come back to visit, visit it, you might have a new perspective. Um, illumination is that new perspective that you might gain, or new insight, and then verification is when you finally finish your design, and um, it's basically the satisfaction that you get from seeing your work uh, finally complete. All right, so now we're gonna go into the basics of design. Next slide. All right, so first I wanna talk a little bit about balance. Balance in a very simple sense is just um, 
how stable and aesthetically pleasing your design is. And the main aspects of this um, are gonna be made up of positive and negative space. So, oh, can you go back? <laughs> okay, so positive and negative, negative space um, make up your entire design and positive space is basically anything that the object that you're using is taking up. Negative space is anything that the objects are absent from. So if you go to the next slide, um, this isn't really an image that's used as an example for that aspect, but um, in this image to the right, those black uh, rectangles would actually be the positive space and then all the white around it would be negative space. Um, but now we're gonna be going into scaling and sizing. And um, a lot of that is used to um, create depth within your images. And I put depth in quotation marks because you can't actually have depth within a 2D image. Um, so oftentimes, even outside of graphic design and art in general, um, you have to find ways to create the illusion of depth. And one way that artists do that is by changing the sizing of objects. So the smaller the object is, the farther it'll seem. So if you look to the right, the bottom rectangle looks much further away than the top rank rectangle. Um, and also, the, we'll be going more into this later on, but it helps guide the viewer's eye. So when you first look at this image, you're going to be looking at the top rectangle first because it's much larger. All right, next slide. All right, so hierarchy. I call this eye tracking, um, but it doesn't matter what you call it. It, it still exists. Um, it's basically how your arrangement of objects within your design um, influence where you look. So you can also call it direction or flow. But um, like I said before, with the past drawing, um, you're going to be looking at the bigger rectangle first and then the smaller rectangle. And that's because your eyes are drawn to bolder things or um, there's just certain elements that capture our attention as humans uh, more so than others. And if we go to the next slide, I think I have an example. Yes, okay. So I want you guys to, ah, go back. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys didn't see that, but I want you guys to point out where on that image you think your eyes would go to first. Anyone, anyone, oh my God. <laughs> Sure, yes, her shoes. <laughs> Thank you guys for playing along with that. Um, it was obviously the woman. Your eyes are gonna go to her first, even though um, there's all that color happening because she is what stands out most within this image. Um, and then all of those colors are just gonna guide your eye out through the rest of the um, painting, all the way out to the right. All right, next slide, that's okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, just a heads up for everyone that's here. For some reason, my laptop keeps clicking ahead, even though I'm not touching it. So if, if it jumps forward for a second, I'm so sorry. Just pretend like you didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to go more into depth with typography. Um, I'm not going to go into depth with the other four aspects of graphic design. Um, because those are kind of self-explanatory, but with typography, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, typography is basically just the art of manipulating type um, in order to create something that is visually appealing and something that is actually readable. <laughs> um, and the biggest misconception within typography is that typeface and font are the same thing. They are not. So when you're looking at typeface and font, typeface is a bigger body that encompasses different fonts. So if you look at that image, that's kind of a good way to represent it. Um, an example would be sans serif as a typeface and it's an example of sans serif. Ooh, I can't think of an example of sans serif. I think uh, Baker's, we, ha we have a- an, Century uh, Gothic is sans serif. There we go, Century <laughs> Gothic as a font. 
Um, so basically, that, that's one of the biggest <laughs> lemon milk. Yes, I love lemon milk. Um, basically, that's the biggest misconception that people have when talking about typography. Um, it's not hugely important, but it's still a distinction that should be known. Um, also, you're going to be using typography a lot of the time to um, convey certain emotions or try and get different messages across. So if I wanted to scare my viewers, um, I would use a font that is much colder and more, um, I guess, like strict. Uh, but if I wanted to make my uh, viewers like happy or feel good about themselves, I'd, I'd use a font that's much softer. Okay, next slide. All right, color. So um, there are obviously there are many different colors, um, and trying to figure out what colors you want to use within a design is very confusing and kind of intimidating. Um, but the easiest way to look at it is just by categorizing them all. So as you can see, um, we have a diagram showing the different primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Um, in graphic design, it's it's common to use neutral colors um, as a background. And neutral colors are like black, whites, grays, um, dark browns, basically anything that's more dull um, is a neutral color. And usually you'll use that as a background color. And then you'll use primary, secondary, and tertiary colors as accent colors um, because it helps it pop out more and it'll grab your viewer's eyes um, much more effectively. And another common, I guess, rule of thumb is um, complementary, complementary colors are always really good to use. Um, so an example would be blue and orange. Because they're opposite of each other on the color wheel, um, they really complement each other when you use them together. All right, next slide. Top left. Oh, are you? Man. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then my point in telling, um, all of you guys this is that really it's not as complicated as it might seem. Um, graphic design seems intimidating when you first go into it. Uh, I, I know when I first started making graphics, uh, it was something that I had no idea what I was doing. I was going in with no experience. I didn't know what Illustrator was. I'm colorblind. There's so many things against me, but um, Really, you just have to put yourself in that situation and just work with the programs, and you'll you'll figure it out. Um, it's really not that difficult. Like literally, any of you can do it. If I can pick colors and I'm colorblind, you guys can make some graphics. Um, next slide. All right, we're gonna be plugging some graphic standards now. We trapped y'all as CNM. We have to, we have to enforce and monitor this. So we're gonna educate y'all. All right, next slide. All right, the masthead. So what what is the masthead? The masthead is basically, to put it, to put it simply, it's kind of like a watermark, but it's not faded. Um, you're gonna be using these on official documents, um, slides, and graphics. And there's different ways that you're gonna use them. Um, on graphics, you have to put it at the very bottom of the graphic and it has to fit up the whole dimension. So you need to line it up right. Um, and it's really easy to add on. It's just, you just drag it in and you do it. So there's really no excuse for not doing it. Um, and then on a document, like a piece of paper, um, you need to put it on your cover page. So if, you're, if you have a document that is 10 pages long, you only need it on the first page, and it has to go up in the header. Um, and then for slides um, like this, uh, you need the masthead on the very first slide at the bottom, similar to a graphic, and then on every other slide after, you need that dotted line right there. And we have it on ours, I don't know it's showing, okay, there, yeah, now it's showing. Yeah, so um, if you can see, it's the dotted line at the very bottom of the slide. And then there's also different colors and different variations. You're not able to change the color, but we have many different um, colors and variations that you can choose from. And we'll be showing you guys how you can access that at the very end.
can I get next? Okay, there we go. All right, logos. So these are all the divisional district and international logos. It's actually international emblem, sorry. Um, but these actually got updated this year. Um, so I don't know, those of you who are new to Circle K um, might not know this, but the divisional logos were different before. Um, and these are the new ones as of this year. Um, so just when you when your clubs are making graphics, make sure you guys are using the updated logos. Um, and there are also black and white variations that are available. Um, they're all in the same spot and they're really easy to find. We'll show you how to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are these are what you need to use. You can't change the color of these. If you do, you're violating graphic standards. Please don't violate graphic standards. But yes. Icons. So these these are not all the icons we have. There are, I think, I don't know how many icons there are. There's a lot of icons. There's over 25 icons. There you go. <laughs> There's a lot of icons. Um, so we have different icons that um, display different aspects of our organization. So on the left, we have leadership. Center, we have service. And then on the right, we have fellowship. Um, but these are just resources that your clubs can use to help promote events or just help decorate your, your designs or your graphics. Um, but yeah, it's just a resource that the district has to help us. All right, colors. This, this isn't as wildly important as the other graphic standards, um, but if you're making an official like design, um, you're gonna have to consider this. Um, th I don't expect anyone to walk out of here knowing exactly every color that <laughs> is graphic standards, but it's good to just have a general idea of like what is allowed and what isn't. And if we could go to the next slide. Typography again. Um, these are the, the official fonts that you can use um, within your designs, but if it makes more sense for you to use um, a different font within your promotional material, um, that is absolutely okay. I have done that. Um, just if you were to be designing something that is official for the entire district of CNH, you should primarily focus on using these official fonts. Um, so if we go back to the logos real quick, you'll see that the divisional logos, um, they're all using a uh, century Gothic font because that is a representation of our district as a whole. So we have to abide by graphic standards. All right, no, that should be that all. Next slide. Ah, yes, okay, yes, we're done. All right, so resources. So we talk a lot about a lot of the different like aspects of social media. We talk about graphics. We talk about graphic standards. Thank you for listening to our graphic standard spiels. Um, and so we're now we're going to talk about the CNM resources. We're not going to go over every single one, um, but here are the ones that are available to you um, that are relevant to this workshop. Um, so one graphic standards. I know we talk about it a lot. My own committee. We've emphasized it probably everywhere. Um, but it is really, really important that you do understand graphic standards and you understand what you need to do on gra or on graphics, on presentations, on documents, on your website even, et cetera. Um, and so if you go to styleguide.cnhcirclek.org, that will take you to the district style guide that basically outlines all the rules, all the regulations for graphic standards. It also shows you some examples too. So if you're kind of confused of what it's supposed to look like, um, that is a huge resource for you. We also have the graphic standard um, assets, um, graphic standards asset folder. Um, it's a Google Drive where basically, so if you go to the link, it's also linked on the style guide as well. Um, basically, it has every file that is related to graphic standards. So you'll find the mass heads, you'll find stripes, you'll find all the logos, you'll find you'll find our mascot Sunny, and you'll find like the icons. Um, there's also templates in there for I believe for presentations and for documents. So if you ever need templates, um, that is also available to you. 
Um, so those are your two biggest resources for graphic design, graphic standards. Um, next, you also have the stock photo drive. So this was created two terms ago by the 2018-2019 CNM committee. Um, basically, these are photos that you, club members, officers, have uploaded that is available for anyone to use. And it's split up into three sections, which is our, also our tenants. Um, so we have a fellowship section, we have service, and we also have a leadership section. So these are just general photos. You can also upload yourself as well um, that anyone can use in our district. The last one um, that we're going to talk about today is the social media reference. So this is very new, so there's not too much content in there. Um, it will be updated um, probably annually or biannually. Um, but basically what this is, is a Google Drive that um, splits up like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram examples of like good posts. So you have a reference. Um, there is also a recording of a webinar I did with my social media coordinator, Angela, a few months ago in the CNM network. So if you want to reflect on like, this is the same presentation. So you want to reflect on like the social media stuff, um, that recording will be on there. I'll probably also upload this one as well. Um, but basically it gives you an outline of what's good and bad on social media. Um, and it's just a Google Drive, so there's no like um, manual that to flip through. It's just like a bunch of uploads. Uh, and there's even more than just the ones that we've listed. So if you go to resources.cnhcirclek.org slash CNM, um, it's recently updated. So everything that's on there is to date because um, I did update a couple months ago with Chris, our tech chair, our past tech chair. Um, so that's all our resources. There's like stuff about press releases. There's stuff about um, databases for like um, news outlets. There's also links to all the ones I have listed here, as well as like graphic design, like request forms, etc. Basically anything my committee does that's for the public, it's on that link there. So now uh, we have about 10-ish minutes left. So we're gonna open up to any questions that y'all may have. So feel free to put your questions in the chat there and Gary and I will answer it to the best of our ability. Please ask us questions so we don't just sit here for 10 minutes. <laughs> also, you can use the raise hand feature if you'd like to actually speak. Or you can just unmute yourself, honestly. Yeah. Copywriting in graphics. That is always a concern. Um, I'd say just avoid using material that is um, very popular or like actually copywritten. So if, you're, if your school's theme or your club's theme is like something say like Star Wars, um, I don't think it's a huge concern if you're making promotional material for just that year, but um, it's always something that you're gonna have to try and avoid. So just do your best to make your graphics very ambiguous, <laughs> but yes. Um, yeah, you definitely wanna double check how similar your content is. I think if it's like inspired by like Animal Crossing or Club Penguin or whatever your like club's theme at the time is, um, it should be fine. But if, if it's like you literally have the characters on there, like you didn't redraw it or like, like change your club members to those like, like inspired like the style, um, then you might have some copyright infringements. It just really depends on what you're basing yourself off of. Um, Kiana there put freepix.com, has free vectors. There's a lot of online resources. I use undraw.co that has open source um, graphics for anyone to use. So I always recommend like if you're looking for inspiration, go to those like open source, like free vectors kind of thing. Um, that way you can avoid as much copyright as possible. Um, so the next question is when making graphics, the different platforms such as Facebook change, um, is there standard sizes? Um, their standard sizes change all the time. How do we keep updated on that? I'm gonna be honest, I feel like as someone who has worked with social media for the last couple of years, like professionally, I personally have no idea. Um, I think the rule of thumb, don't laugh at me, the rule of thumb is to just do, for me, I do like 1980 by either um, 1080 or 1005. Um, and usually those are pretty set for event pages. Now you also have to keep in mind that uh, group pages, 
and cover photos on profiles are also different sizes. So I just like to play around um, until everything fits. For example, like group pages, they're a lot like, the width is a lot bigger than event pages and cover photos on profiles. Um, so you want to make those adjustments when you're designing graphics. Um, it's, it's hard because Facebook changes it a lot without telling anyone. Um, so your best bet is to like make a general graphic and then leave space for you to make adjustments. Yeah. Another tip that I, I started doing um, like partway into the term was I created a test page and a test like group page for myself on Facebook um, to just upload graphics and see if it fit. Um, an issue with that though is that Facebook doesn't display the images the same way um, on the computer as it does your phone. So no matter what you do with your dimensions, it's gonna get messed up somewhere. Um, so just work to the best of your ability to fit it. Um, I know this was a huge pain for me uh, early on in, into the term, but um, just as you keep working with a, a different platform, um, you'll start to get familiar with it until they update it again. But it's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it, you're, you're fighting Facebook, like, Yeah, Facebook is a tough one there. Yeah. Um, your best bet is just to adjust as you go. Use um, the 1980, 10, um, 1920, 1080 as like your like basis and then go from there. Um, so question from Ricky. Um, I noticed you had view insights on CNH Circle K Instagram. What are pros of setting it as a community slash business so on Instagram, there are two different accounts. You have your personal, which is your personal, right? And then there's a uh, actual setting. If you go to your personal settings, there is a button that says um, change to business account or something like that. I don't know the exact words, um, but basically when you have a business account, um, your account becomes more geared to actually have announcements and advertising. Um, so I shifted it to a business account because this allows us to put like a promotions page um, where like if we have like a like something that we want to promote like pay pr like ads um, we have that option I don't think we ever will as CNH Circle K um, but another big thing is there's a contact button so if you need to email like like professional like I do have some people like other nonprofits emailing my CNM email um, so that's set there um, so people can contact you for like professional stuff Another thing on Instagram story, for example, you can actually tag your posts in there. So a lot of like influencers and businesses, they'll say, oh, like new posts up or something like that. And then you can actually click on their page and it'll bring you to that post. Um, so those are those, those kind of features aren't available on a personal account. I believe you can't share links either. Um, so it gives you a lot of additional features that are meant to be like promo slash advertising. I hope that answered your question. Um, from Daniel, we have, do you have any tips for future website designing? Um, we are in our process of making our very first website this year. Um, if, I don't know, Gary, you know anything, but for me, I, this is not really my area of expertise. You definitely wanna reach out to the district tech chair, um, but generally for a website design, really good places to start is Wix or Weebly, basically a platform that gives you a template for your website. And then unless you have someone that's like super good at like website design coding, um, I would start there just because it cuts down a lot of the design stress of a website and allows you to start focus more on content and understanding what your members want to see on your website. And um, a good rule of thumb, um, just to follow with any sort of design um, is sometimes less, is more so don't feel the need to cram a whole bunch of different like photos or designs into your website um and just keep it consistent so if one page is a certain color you might want to keep with that theme mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i'm not an expert in this field but that's that's, <laughs> that's some of the advice i can give yeah honestly reach out to the tech committee or the tech chair once they're appointed they're going to be your best resource for website design um, Emily, I don't know if this is a serious question or not, but she asked, do TikToks require the mass edit? No, at the time, they do not. It's the same thing with Instagram story. 
Um, although if you do have a graphic that you plan on sharing onto Facebook or other platforms, I do ask that you put on the masthead. But if it's for the story or for like video based platforms, you do not need the masthead. However, there is like if you do like a full video, uh, TikTok, I'll let the, my successor deal with that. But if you do YouTube videos, there is graphic standards for videos. So if you don't know about that, that was brand new. Um, Nathan and Ryan, my cinematographers from this past term, they're the ones that wrote it and designed it. So um, make sure you go to the style guide for more information about that. Um, but that's more for district videos rather than club videos. But um, there is graphic standards for that. To talk, not so much. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Um, Simi asks, can you please repeat what you said about mass heads? Like, it's on the top for docs and the line apart, the line part is on the bottom for PowerPoint. Um, so, Jared, did you want to do that? Yeah, I got it. Um, so in terms of graphics, it's always going to be at the bottom of the design. Um, it, okay, wait, Erica, can you go to the beginning slide? For which one? Go to the beginning slide, the very first slide. Like our slide? Okay, yeah. there you go. Um, so, <laughs> As you can see, that's the masthead and it's at the very bottom. This is how you're going to be doing it for slides, but this is also how you're going to be doing it for graphics. Um, if you go to the next slide. So as you can see, it's only the stripes now. So for slides, the first slide of your presentation always has the full masthead, but every slide following it only has the lines. Um, and for documents like paper, um, you're going to have the masthead on the cover photo, or not cover photo, what? Cover page <laughs> um, in the header. So it's going to be at the very top, right above whatever the title of the document is. Um, I don't think we have an example, but um, how can I visualize this? I don't know if that already answered your question. Um, basically, it's, it's going to be, it's not taking up the full width of the page, it's going to be within the borders that you have. Um, and in the just, margins. Yeah, the margins, sorry. Um, it's, just, it's just contained within the header. It's really simple, you just drag it in and it should fit. If you look at um, any of the district meetings or the packets or even like the past like chair apps, um, those are graphic standards for documents. So it's within the margins and it's at the top of the page. And all this information that we're talking about graphic standards is on the style guide and there's different sections for like newsletters, graphics, uh, videos, it's all there. Uh, <laughs> Mindy asks, what does it take to be a CNM chair? Um, I think it, to be a like, CNM chair, well, you have to have a really good understanding of design. Um, like I'm not a graphic designer myself, but I understand the aesthetics and design principles. So like if I needed to edit a graphic, I have that capability. Also understanding how digital marketing works. So um, you should be very like proficient at different social medias. Um, also understanding the idea of an audience, like who are you talking to? Who are you marketing your information to? And understanding those aspects makes a really good CNM chair. Um, also understanding very well the graphic standards um, and um, brand management is also very good skills to have for a CNM. Any, that... that's, the same. A, that's the same question. No, you do not need the mass head for TikToks. But you um, for videos. But not for videos, videos, you do. They're, they're, not TikTok they're... videos, yeah. yeah. For regular videos in landscape that's posted on YouTube and things like that, that should have the logo. The logo is different from the masthead, but that, that's also in the style guide, so. Yes. Um, Tiana asks, can you repeat what websites you use? Um, so I don't use it personally. I use it like back in high school, um, but two resources that I use is Wix. Um, so wix.com, or I don't remember what the actual URL is, but Wix is a really good program. Um, the other one is Weebly, so W-E-E-B-I, not I, <laughs> L-Y, so B- W B B sorry I can't <laughs> English right now W E B L Y I'm so sorry that I don't know why that took me so long to get but those are the two resources that I use. All right, any other? Thank you, Gio. I really appreciate that. Um, 
It's Wix. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. The chat got your back because I can't spell today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, any other questions? If not, we're going to end the um, webinar there. We're a little bit over time, but if anyone has any last minute questions, uh, feel free to contact myself or Garrett. Um, we, we go Facebook, email, whichever your preference is. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we may not be CNM anymore, but we will be CNM in our hearts. <laughs> so feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, I'm technically not retired till I get a successor. So I'm half CNM. Um, also, um, there's a link for you there, or you want to scan via the um, QR code, uh, make sure you sign in. Um, I don't know what time the sign in will close, probably like 930. Uh, but make sure you get signed in. That way you can get all your credit. And thank you for coming. Thank you all. Hope you guys were able to learn something. If not, thank you for supporting us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you again. Um, the link will be posted on the event page. So if you don't get bit.ly uh, forward slash CNAPES uh, SEC 2020, it'll be on the event page as well. It's also the same link that was used yesterday. So um, if you have that saved somewhere for some reason, it's also there. But we're going to go ahead and end it. Thank you so much again for coming. We really appreciate your support and um, just being in attendance. Yeah. And go to the other SEC webinars for the rest of the week. Yeah, keep going, guys. All right, have a good night. Good night, all.